Welcome to Stage Crunchy and Milk. If you have any questions or comments, we have multiple ways we can be reached. Twitter is, of course, the second best way, because I'm a big proponent of around is the best way to reach me. Stage Crunchy. For those who need instant gratification, however, you're not going to get that from the reach around. You get that from Twitter, which the show's feed is at SkimPod. That's S-K-I-M-P-O-D. Like the band that was popular in the early 2000s. Stays crunchy. For the more patient among you, and let's be honest, who really is patient out there anymore? Email address for the show is podcast at stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Crunchy, again, being spelled with a K. We're available via Apple Podcast, which I don't have an iPhone, so I don't know what the fuck that is. Stitcher Radio, which I haven't used in quite some time, but I bet a bunch of you do. Tune in Radio, once again, I have no idea what that is, but we're on it. Google Play, which I have access to, but I never use. And of course, the website, stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the show if you enjoy what we do here. Stays Crunchy! So, I've heard that the band plays on here at Skim. Which, in this instance, I believe Skim is the the network. It's the idea. It's not the actual Skim. And those members of Skim provide to you a pod called Cast, which I've heard through the grapevine is a music discussion show. And I know everyone out there likes music, unless you're some kind of weirdo. They talk mostly about hip-hop. I'm I'm being told that's the foundation of which it's built. I've been trying to get them to talk about Taylor Swift, but so far, all I hear is that they don't like her, so they're saying that if they want the show to be dope, which is what they're claiming it is, no Taylor Swift. But if you want to hear some Kanye West discussion, I've heard Common been brought up on there. Check that out. And if you want to speak to us on our personal Twitters, the man of a thousand nicknames is Tatum216. The real ODP, that ODB, the original Goat and Koki. We have our host, Tayrell713. And of course, I am Lunchbox2099, not 2099, 2099. Hello, welcome to episode 233 of Stage Crunchy and Milk. I am your host, the internet's Tayrell713. It's episode 233, and we are all ambidextrous shooters. All from a shithole country. I'm here with the man of a thousand nicknames, daughters formerly known as Chessfield Rock, was the 216's own Tatum. Hello, I'm Shadem O'Neal, a.k.a. the fake ODP. <laughs> We're also joined by noted futurist, the last of the Golden Coquies, the suburban Puerto Rican. It's the real ODP, it's Gabe. Breaking news, by the time this podcast comes out, part of the script for the Black Widow movie will be leaked. Uh, in it, she's going to go around and beat up all the sexual harassers in the Marvel Universe. Blah. Starting with Star Fox. If anyone's never heard of Star Fox, go look up Star Fox. All right. And of course, we're joined by the Pimp of Parma, the HQ Thousand Air of, of Team Skim, Slunchbox. Boom, zoom, straight to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pour some Super Mario cereal in the bowl and uh, set this off. I seen some of that at Mark's the other day. All right, on. See, that's you can it. see some of that in my kitchen right now, <laughs> on top of the fridge. Tell you, I got that hustle working well. I got the bits all. So, listeners, have you talked about me hustling cereal? I don't know. We have. When so. when, okay. the super, when the Super Mario cereal went on sale, I came up on uh, six boxes of it at uh, my local uh, Mark's. Just, we always talk about Mark's little grocery store chain we have here locally. The main reason I stay in Ohio. I flipped three boxes on eBay, 20 each, sold them like instantly. I put them up and they were already sold, not even within 24 hours. They was gone. Gave a box to a co-worker whose son loves uh, 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 Nintendo and Mario in particular stuff. I was like, she's like, oh, you'll be so excited because he, he was getting uh, Super Mario Odyssey for Christmas and it comes with an Amiibo on the box for, for use in that game. And there's two boxes sitting in my counter, in my cabinet right now. I've yet to consume. I kind of don't know if I want to. I kind of want to keep them for item collector's items. Yep. But they are just sitting straight up in the cereal. I counter. can tell you, so, as someone who ate the cereal, you should just keep just it. keep the box. There you go. So <laughs> faith, my man over here. Uh, well, if you're gonna elaborate on your shit, Marvel Star Fox. <laughs> <laughs> not to be confused with Nintendo, Nintendo Star, Star Fox. Nintendo Star Fox. Okay. This guy's not neither a fox nor nor a star. He's a uh, He's, I think he's uh, Thanos' brother, so I don't know. He might show up in an Infinity War. But he, you know how um, Kilgrave from uh, Jessica Jones had the power to make people do what he wants, including like making people want to fuck him? 
Mm-hmm. Star Fox is kind of like that. Only he's a hero, and the only his power is limited to making people want to fuck him. That's his power. Yes, he, he can make. Yeah. yeah, and he used it to uh, take advantage of She Hulk. Oh, and she beat the shit out of him uh, afterwards, and he once tried to um, calm the Hulk down by uh, <laughs> stimulating his pleasure centers. He, and and he got punched in the chest for his troubles. But, you know, it's better than, I don't know, the Hulk wanting to fuck you in the ass. So, uh, <laughs> which was like, what do you think was going to happen? Isn't that the situation Black Widow finds herself in? Is the Hulk wants to fuck her in the ass? No. no. Not that, not I don't cool. know if it... <laughs> There's a it? sexual tension for him, but he didn't specifically say, Hulk wants smash ass. Oh, ain't no... <laughs> I'm just taking it out of the Disney movie into the reality, okay? Hulk won't ain't no... I mean, fucking in those. Oh, you haven't seen it yet, man. I can't say it. What? No, he hasn't seen it. Oh, right. We literally just talked about this like an hour ago. That I'm not gonna ruin anything. Okay. Uh, I'm almost caught up on the Marvel Universe. The last movie I saw was yeah, but the Strange. movie I'm specifically talking about is Thor Ragnarok, which you just told me earlier you haven't seen yet. So. I have not seen that yet. Yeah, so I'll keep quiet. What do I need? I know the audience doesn't care about this. What do I need? I've, all, I've seen uh, uh, Doctor Strange is my last movie. What do I need to catch up? It's uh, just Ragnarok. Spider-Man, Ragnarok, and Guardians of the Galaxy? Guardians 2. Yeah, yeah, Guardians 2, like, you Guardians don't really two. need to I catch up. I saw Guardians 1. Like, nothing really happens in Guardians 2 that, like... Post-credits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Like, yeah, but you can, you can knock that out. It's on Netflix and hurry up. I would. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Disney's getting his own shit. Well, uh, as always around these parts, when they are announced, we seek them, we find them, we eat them. There's new Oreos. And this was a mind fuck. <laughs> this was a mind fuck uh, to me. This is like, the, I'm always usually a be like, it's a cookie, it's going to taste good, what the fuck? This was a mind fuck of all the ones I've ever had. Like, one I thought was like, like, a, like a, a, a fucking slam dunk. Um, and one was, a, I was like, I didn't want to taste it. And, um, it was a mindfuck, to say the least. So, the flavors this go around, uh, I believe I got these both from our local Giant Eagle, so you should be able to find them at your, any local, local groceries, Our chocolate hazelnut Oreo. Those are made with the, uh, the shortbread cookie, and when the chocolate cookie, hot and spicy cinnamon Oreo. These are Red Hot's. Smushed into Oreo cream, and uh, they were good, damn fine. As a matter of fact, who the fuck would have thought some cinnamon ass Oreos would be the way to go? Nine percent. The Aztecs, because they knew to mix spices with the chocolate. I think I'm the only one on the show that, when you showed the preview for these, didn't immediately go, "Oh no, the world is ending." (laughs) Why the fuck did they do this? These are going to be terrible. I stayed quiet. I learned my lesson in the past. (laughs) Yeah. And opening the package, the cinnamon hits you right away. Yeah, it, they they were they were good. Like I didn't want them because it's not a candy I eat. I never I didn't like like those atomic fireballs and like cinnamon red hot. The little red disc the, yeah. the church ladies have. Those are the kind of candies. Those are like oh my god, you ate all the Halloween candy. I used to fuck with those hard back in when I was a kid. Oh, so yeah, dude, I love cinnamon discs, and I used to get the little fireballs from the, the convenience store by my house. You've been a heat sick your whole yeah, life. Yeah, your whole didn't fucking know life. It. Didn't even know it. That's so crazy. Because I used to like the fireball ones, because it was like a test of, of a light. Yeah. <laughs> like, you had to, like, get through the initial coating to get to that sweet inner core. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you, you've been work. challenging yourself your whole fucking life. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that was never my bag. Let me tell you something. Good regular, straight up. Yeah. Good just the cream by itself. Milk was actually fucking up the situation. Um, I, I liked it all the way around. I think um, you know what it had going, kind of like a cinnamon toast crunch situation. What I was, I was just about to say, when you put it in the milk, it kind of tastes like a um, like a little bit like a cinnamon roll. Yeah, it, the, when you put it in the milk, it got real, real subtle. Like the milk really like subdued it. Yeah, the fat I mean, in the just milk. like just like milk does. And we use one percent milk here uh, in most situations, almost always. I'm, we we're not a whole milk family here, but so we we try to keep the fat kind of content low. And every now and again, skim milk, oddly enough. Uh, but so so it it won't have so much fat holding that. But right there, the milk just kind of washes over it. Took a nice. I I enjoyed that. And uh, I, I didn't think I would. I, I didn't want to eat it. Um, and but the, it was the polar opposite for me with the hazelnut. That was a funky ass cookie. 
Tastes just like EL fudge. I don't know if y'all remember them cookies. My uh, man Ernie used to fuck with them shits. I'm that's gonna, exactly what I'm I was going to say. I'm going to disagree. I liked EL fudge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked EL fudge. It, and these tastes are like maybe, shit. Maybe you liked EL fudge in the 80s, 90s. But here in 2018, you know better. Fuck EL fudge. Yeah, as soon, as soon as I bit into that, because one of my roommates... Had some of those fudge cookies in the in the cabinet, like, and I ate like he had like two left in the package, and they'd been sitting there for like two months. <laughs> and I came home from work one day, and I was like, "Fuck these cookies!" And I just downed them. It was like a month and a half ago. And as soon as I bit into these, it tasted like a subdued version of those Keebler fudge cookies that I just had. That's why I didn't hate them, but I just thought they were okay. So what you're telling me is these chocolate fresh. Fresh. We'll throw quotes around. Chocolate hazelnut Oreos taste like two, two month old stale EL fudges. No, the EL fudges had like three times the staying power <laughs> and taste. That these did. That's what I'm saying. These taste like subdued version of what I ate. Yeah. Like these were tasted like what I imagined those fudges would have tasted after they'd been sitting in the cabinet for two months mm. instead of what they actually were. The cream by itself was fine. The cookie cream combination is what I didn't like. And milk did nothing for this party either way. So I wonder if the cookie is fucking up the game here in some way, shape, or form. I almost had savory notes, tiny, like, low yeah. savory notes. I, 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 I got to say, I mean, unless they change something with the, with the actual wafer, like, that cream, it was just, like, unpleasantly savory. It was just, like, it was a very unpleasant cookie. And the more you ate it... And the stronger it got. Luckily, I had those cinnamon. I ate the cinnamon second to get that fucking taste out of my mouth because those were. They, they, it was unpleasant. Like I know Gabe hates the Swedish fish. These were worse than the Swedish fish. These are absolutely trash. The ones I've hated the most. Wow. I would never ever eat those ever again. And that's what I thought I was going to say about the cinnamon. How, how, uh, that like, said, how I, like I feel strongly about how terrible those were. <laughs> <laughs> like those were so bad. Just like, just just mediocre. Just mediocre. I just uh, I I, I had an expectation of, of, and that's what it is. It, like like Bob said, we have to go on expectation list. And I know we it's hard, that's difficult to do as, as, as individuals. But if I just went in there blind, maybe I wouldn't have been so just saddened by this bullshit. <laughs> but them cinema ones. A delight, a pleasant surprise yeah. that I don't even know what to do that with. Was a, that, that was definitely a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Like, all right, are you folks ready for this? I, I, ready. I hated them both. Okay. And I could tell by the <laughs> way you were out there reacting. I saw it coming. <laughs> uh, all right. I didn't have any expectations for this Nutella hazel chocolate hazelnut Oreo because I I don't I don't have I don't even remember the last time I had Nutella. I uh, I I have hazelnut creamer in my coffee. That's about it. And okay. that's on occasion. That's the only situation I like hazelnut in. So I went in expectationless and I don't know what. Maybe my senses are fucked up. I smelled a savory. Yeah, yeah. I almost said pizza. A savory smell when I busted it open. I'm like, that can't be right. I tried it. Straight up bad. <laughs> in milk, bad. Just the cream, bad. All bad. I, I, might, I might have to co-sign with Tatum. These might be uh, these might be worse than Swedish fish. I really, really am. I'm, I, I, it's cause, it's, for the Swedish fish, you're like, what the? Why would that be good? Yeah. But for this, you're like, well, I'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So yeah, because the Swedish this, fish, this is the new, uh, this is the new standard bearer for bad, bad Oreos. Yeah, because the Swedish fish had like kind of almost a chemically aftertaste a yes. little bit. These, the Swedish fish were terrible fresh. When you let them get stale for a couple years, <laughs> they kind of subdued it a little bit. They they were they were a little bit better. But. I, I I think Nick Jew said it best when she says she kind of felt like she was being poisoned. <laughs> yeah, that's what I felt like. I'm like, what? Do I have to go to the hospital? What's going on here? Yeah, th- th- these um just just didn't taste good. Yeah. I mean, I I don't want I like uh I'm tempted to try it again just to see if I was fooling myself. But now I said, fuck you, Anthony. <laughs> In, the, in, a, in kind of a strange turn of events, I did say I hate the hot and spicy cinnamon. I'm going to stand by that, but I'm not going to give it a low score, and here's why. I know I'm biased. I hate uh, cinnamon candy, mm-hmm. cinnamon gum, cinnamon toothpaste, that kind of artificial never, cinnamon. He's never had a close-up mouth. Yeah, I, I do not like... 
I do not. Why the fuck would you brush your teeth with cinnamon? <laughs> why the fuck would you brush your teeth with cinnamon? There's spearmint. There's wintergreen. There's fresh mint. There's even peppermint. Why the fuck is your... Why <laughs> you you name it! <laughs> <laughs> but why are we doing cinnamon? Who said out of all the fucking uh, 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 things to freshen our mouths, but we said, let's do cinnamon. I hate cinnamon, gum. I, sh- I hate I sh- cinnamon candy. Let's freshen your I mouth with a spice. I chew Big Red all through high school, and... I don't even know what the fuck my problem was. I don't even know if they even make Big Red they, they still make Big Red. But Why? Big Red um, you know, is, is almost a thing that you can judge people with. Like, oh, are, are you a Big Red chewer? Okay. I like cinnamon Tic Tacs, too. Yeah, I hate those, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry. Those things I, I get passionate about this. Yeah, uh, this cinnamon. Like I feel because I've never met anybody who feels as strongly against the uh, cinnamon uh, uh, candy and uh, gum as, and toothpaste and, and mints as, as much as I as much as I do. But try. these things nail the taste. So if you like this, I recommend it. Do you not eat cinnamon toast crunch? But see, cinnamon toast crunch doesn't taste like the candy or the gum or whatever that to me. I like. Real cinnamon, cinnamon cookies, mm-hmm. cinnamon rolls. You know, I actually like. That's why I'm so confused about why I hate cinnamon candy so much. I actually like the spice cinnamon. Yeah, uh, like it's just something about the spicy element of it, like giving it that extra kick that that this turns me off. Like um, Atomic Fireballs is just like, oh, so this is a pain candy. I get it. I don't want it. You just give it the kids, the, the, the kids you don't like. Yeah, like you I guess. Trick or treat, treat uh, t- t- trick me, huh? That's some cinnamon candy. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of candy that gets your uh, get your door kicked in, <laughs> and some air stone at your house. <laughs> um, uh, all right, uh, out of uh, what is our out of five? Five. five. Okay, out of five. Uh, I, g- I give chocolate it, hazelnut Oreo. I give it a negative one. <laughs> That's uh, that's gonna be at the lowest end one because that's as low as we go. So that's a one. <laughs> I give it like a two point seven five. All right. Um, uh, yeah, two and a half. Oh, oh, never mind. Like I, I want to give it a zero. <laughs> I don't want to give it any any cookies. It, it gets no respect. It gets no respect. If it, it tasted more like the the fudge ones from the the keyboard, I would have given it like a three point two. Yeah, if, if you guys want to fudge, if if you guys want to try to make it a fudge. Um and take out that uh that savoriness of that uh, of the hazelnut or something like that, you know maybe. I don't like hazelnuts, it's like, like you know I don't Christmas know. time nuts be everywhere. So mm. uh, you end up finding somebody's house and you can hit the nutcracker with and get you. Some, I don't like hazelnut. I like Ferrero Rocher's. I like Toblerones. They I, I like. Uh, I, I love hazelnut. I love Nutella. Yeah, but that don't taste like that to that, me. I mean, in my opinion, it, that that does not. Taste, that's when you gotta click up with the Nutella. Oh my god, to make it happen. Was that the other Keebler? Uh, didn't they have the pizza? Uh, pizza O? Uh, the pizza ch- uh, chips? That's what they taste like. <laughs> the, yeah, the Keebler pizza chips dipped in uh, cocoa. Yeah, those fucking tripe. <laughs> How about you? Oh, on the top All right. Well, I was gonna give it higher than one because you know I feel like this got a, the, the very worst thing I've ever had. I don't know, but. Since Tatum wants to give it a zero and he can't go lower than one, I will give it a one. Uh, maybe it will average out his uh, his score, get it as poor as he wants it to be. So do you uh, do we average so, it out between the four no, of us? Just everybody's, so. everybody's, everybody's vote. As you can tell, Anthony's is very low. Okay, so I guess if I'm gonna give the cinnamon one, I give it a, a two, I give it a solid three. Oh shit! Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking about something over there and. Lost track of time. Damn it, we can't have that air. <laughs> it, it'll never exist. Don't no, no, worry, not. Uh, the cinnamon ones, I'd probably give them like, mm, like a three point three. <laughs> because, like, I mean, th- they're fine. I-, I I think they're all right, but they weren't like special to me. They just they were okay. Yeah, the, the only reason I gave it a three is because I was like, I don't want to eat them, and then I was like. Oh man, these are better than this bullshit. Like, like what I re- like, all right. I have a, an app on my phone called Untapped, where you, like you check into different beers and you can rate them on a scale from you know zero to five. Uh-huh. So for me, like a three point five is like it's all right. Like I would drink this again. I would eat this again. Like that kind of shit. When I start giving things like a three point seven five, a four, a four point two five, that's the stuff I personally really like. So if I give something less than a three point five. Like, I know, like, theoretically, a 2.5 is supposed to be the middle for me, mm-hmm. but really a 3.5 is the middle for me, because if it's, like, I don't really care about it that much, then why would I do it again? Yeah. Hmm. I right. <coughs> Shock, my shock. I'm giving that shit a five. 
It's what we come to Oreos for. For these, for, it's what we come to these unique ass Oreos for. It sticks out like a sore thumb. You you go in thinking this might be the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. It turns out it's pretty great. You just gave that shit a work hot um, number. That shit, is, <laughs> it, it it just it, it does the damn thing. I'm thoroughly impressed by it. It's the, it's one of the most surprising Oreos we've had fucking in forever. If you give those a five, though, that yeah. means they're perfect the way they are. And how are they supposed to strive that's to not, do that, better? That, that, that's the, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just saying he just gave it a work hot number. Yeah. Like she she thick and she's the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is we what we what we've all, as we discussed what we come here to the Oreo game for is for 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 something unique, something interesting, and they are they are all the, it is all those things. And plus a tasty cookie. I, I think it's like this is why I'm like that's top of the fucking the fl- line for those kind of for, for the limited edition wild out in the streets ass Oreo flavors. Now we wa- I watch this show on YouTube. I've talked about it on here now called Hot Ones, and there's this dude who has dubbed himself the Hot Ones super fan on Twitter, and he does my man Brett per- Baker. He does some power rankings, which I feel like he's very prisoner of the moment. Yeah, uh, I feel like whatever the newest show is. He's kind of like Johnny Come Lately in that, like, oh, this was the newest show. This one was really good. I know he doesn't write it like that, but when I watch, look at his power rankings, unless he has some sort of, like, TRL retirement thing where they're only allowed to be on the power rankings for so long, I feel like his power rankings are kind of, oh, this person was, like, on three weeks ago, and they were really cool. It's like it's fresh in his mind. Mm -hmm. So to him, it's better than something that came out, like, a year and a half ago. But that's not what I'm saying. No, but the point I want to get to is... I think because we've been doing this for so long, we might need to go back and look up all the different Oreos that we've tried, or mm-hmm. at least look up a list of the special Oreos if we can find one, a recent one online. Because I've tried, and it's not it's not easy to find a current list. Like maybe yeah. Nabisco has like a directory of sorts, but we maybe we should go back and see if we can rank them as a show okay. on what we think they like they should be. Have our own Oreo power rankings. Okay, Oreo power rankings is I definitely what we're doing here in 2018. Right. Better believe that, Meshack. I'm not saying these motherfuckers belong on that list. What I'm saying is they do everything. What, what I, well, I'm I saying we rate we, all of them. Yeah, we yeah, don't have sure. to necessarily do like our top ten. Yeah. Just go through them all and, t- and kind of like put them where we think they like. Swedish Fish like will be on the bottom, right? Uh, actually, this might be on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the Swedish Fish is very close. I really hated Swedish Fish. <laughs> I mean, we could do it where like, we, we eat, come up with the list of the Oreos yeah. and we each... Give it our own rating, and then we like average it out as a team. Yeah, that way, like you know, Gabe's adamant that like hazelnut is the worst, whereas I think it's like okay, and like we fight over it. Like you know, it kind of makes it fair that I mean, it's an we, average of the opinion rather than like. So come into 2018, we will have an all Oreo show. At least a, a deep a deep dive into Oreos that'll take about a, 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 good, a good chunk of the program. Asterix, if we can make it funny. Yeah, we, can, it, 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 we don't got to necessarily be funny. You know what it is? We can talk about slavery. I'm, you, I'm, I'm, telling, to, I'm, I mean, t- I'm telling you already. We already are in the midst of some the, the, some some possible paywall discussions that might be behind the paywall. We'll see. We'll see how that all. Yeah, works I mean, out. like we don't even necessarily have to make it a show. Yeah, like, we could just do like a, like a website of list. content. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Make an article. So, uh, like I said, I'm giving them bitches a five. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm respect. They fucking they swag. They just walked in the room with like, oh don't. Let me show you something, and I'm thoroughly impressed by them. Not, I'm not saying they are the greatest, or you need to go out and get the business. I'm saying they do something special, which is why I like these weird ass Oreos. And why we've been eating them since we fucking started the show. It's neat to fucking come across Oreo changing up the game. Let's see how they do the rest of the year. We have seen some of the stuff that is uh, previewing and or, or or in discussion. I'm looking for them tied Oreos. <laughs> them tied pods. I didn't know where that joke came from, but I'm you know I caught the news yesterday, and apparently there's a thing where you're like putting tied pods on food and and, and eating them. Why? It's so funny because like there is a um, a stat about how. Like they always trying to say to keep them away from kids because kids will eat them when adults are fuckly actually eating these side pods. What? I, 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 they, I'm not, they, you know, not going to get sucked into this. It doesn't look like Gail was about to just that. get up and go like, fuck this podcast. <laughs> no, it's just that <laughs> he got up out of, his, out of his seat like, fuck this shit. I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to get me to discuss it and be like, why, why, why? You know what? I'm not going to be fooled by it. Go ahead. Eat your Tide Pod. I'm, it's I'm not going to feel anything are. about it. I'm going to walk away. You know, I'm not being sucked into your into your into your little trap and get me to talk about you. You just talk about these cookies right quick, baby. All right, I already. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you know my ha- my hazelnut one. Uh, you know what? Uh, subjectively, I would give the hot and spicy a two. 
because I don't like that type of candy. Man, it's lingering on me right now. But objectively, it, is, it definitely is. I've eaten like five more of the hazelnut cookies since I ate them hot cinnamon ones, and I can still taste the cinnamon in my mouth. Yeah. The milk did a good. The, I, 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 I ate it in the reverse order. The hazelnut and the milk really cleaned up my mouth. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just had to oh, break. Okay. I had to drop that because it's like it's <laughs> over here. And I'm I keep trying to swallow and it just it's lingering. And oh, I took like 18 sips of water and that shit's still there. <laughs> Objectively, I'm gonna give it a three and a half because it is what it says it is. Okay. I thought you just gave it a two. No, I said subjectively. Okay. A two. Objectively, for the masses, if I had to take my personal feelings out of it. I would give it a three and a half. You know, I like your thought process. I like your thinking. There you go, people. Those are, uh, what is that? Hot and spicy cinnamon Oreos. Chocolate hazelnut Oreos. Uh, they, they're around your way. I could, I could, uh, I could, uh, you could do worse. <laughs> that's a terrible way to wrap that up, but that's what have, it is. You don't have subjective and objective rankings? Like, uh, for my, the best, uh, subjectively, personally, uh, Favorite uh, uh, favorite single Wu Tang album is uh, Liquid Swords. Oh yeah. Objectively, I know that I know that uh, only built for Cuban links is a better album. Objectively, <clears throat> on your podcast cast. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll just leave we'll leave that behind. And uh, first up, as always, is my man Tatum. Please. Well, <laughs> okay, so this, yeah, this is a good uh, subject then. Slide on in. I, I, I was thinking about this and I forgot about this. So, is there a difference if you're getting into like an argument with your girlfriend or wife? If you say, "Now listen to the phrasing," okay, you're acting like a bitch <laughs> or saying "bitch." Is there a difference? I, yes, there's clearly a difference. There's a difference, yes. but in the heat of the moment, there is no difference. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. The real. <laughs> you try to explain that difference, you're going to make her even angrier. I guess if one came at it like real clear, you know. Oh, if you said, please don't act like a bitch. Like, hold on. You're kind of acting like a bitch right now. If you could if you'd stop like that, but if you were full tilt, you're acting like a bitch. Well, you know, it's not going to fly. You know what? I would I would venture to say both would be equally taken poorly because yeah. no no no. There's, but there's a level of porn that's going from one. If you are coming full bore, you just might as well call him a bitch. If you slow yourself down, like you're acting like a bitch. And look, look I'm not saying you are. I'm saying you're kind of acting like one. If you keep on reiterating, don't, hey, you're not a bitch, but you're acting like a. That, I don't think there's. A, I don't think there's. A I don't know if there's going to help. We, we can really use a woman's perspective on this one, but we don't have any. T- Go get that uh, neighbor. Um, <laughs> but um, my listeners who identify as ladies who might or might not be offended by, uh, let me know how that would uh, go over on you. If you would be, if you'd be so kind, if you would be offended, let us know too. I'm interested. What about your uh, co-host today that identifies ladies? You want my perspective? <laughs> no. Who identifies as a lady? <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's many uh, approaches to this. You could like he said, just say, act like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. You could say, "Excuse me, I have Excuse to tell you, madam, but you are acting like a bitch today." The temperament that you're pointing in my direction today is sort of reminiscent of what would, one would call a biatch. <laughs> there is the uh, Fox News method. Uh, is my woman a bitch? Um, <laughs> so, so uh, poll for the day. <laughs> Top poll for the day. Is my woman a bitch? Some are, or you could say, some would say that my woman's a bitch. That could be the CNN method. Like, you know, some would say my woman's a bitch. Some would say my woman's not being a bitch. We're just gonna have to leave it right there. That's a that's your that's your news uh that's your news method. I don't know. If you just say the word bitch, you could. There's some plausible deniability when you're saying I wasn't calling you a bitch. I was just saying the word bitch. How do you think that would be taken? I don't know. B. Also, oh, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm I'm losing my shit. I call him a, I call a bitch a bitch in a minute. Just don't care. Um, I can't care. But I just eat that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna call anybody a bitch or say that. I just remember that because I remember our friend uh, Dennis said that before. Like, hey, what you can do is like, 
First of all, I'm never taking advice from you if you're saying that shit. Like, <laughs> not, not, a, not a very successful man in his relationships. I don't, I don't know. I, I, at that time, back in no. the day, that's why I worded it that, that way. But it was just like, I, like, is this something I put in my back pocket or is something I just like, okay. How's that work for you so far? When you get punched in that air by your girlfriend and she breaks your eardrum. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was. I always had that thought like, man, I'd just rather just leave and go get a milkshake than, um, than, than have to call somebody a bitch. Well, you could always just pull a... A bitch says what? And, oh, man. <laughs> and say, hey, I didn't call you it. I didn't call you it. Oh. You the one to say it what? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't do that either. <laughs> D- don't don't call nobody a bitch unless look look I'm 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 pretty tight about I don't really, I don't bandit about but I, but I am I'm not fronting when I tell you I will call a bitch a bitch in a minute that's my I can't help it I was raised on too short and it's just kind of who I am so if I'm talking about Ann Coulter I might be lazily and lazily the bandy about bitch. Tommy Loran and all them uh, of that ilk, but I also probably would call uh, uh, what's your face? Uh, what's your boy from Arizona? John McCain a bitch too. So I mean, my bitch. all bitches ain't women. I, I, and I, I have I, thrown around the word bitch for a few uh, for a man a few times. Yeah. So I mean, it is what it is on that situation. It's it's a real it's a climate in this country right now, and I have to wonder where where, where we are headed. In, in this current situation, I constantly Hashtag find myself me too. having to check myself before I say things on social media because I like my initial reaction. Like I saw some shit Tommy Loren said earlier about like um, there are shitty countries out there. Like if, if if their countries are so great, why do they want to come here? Let's be honest about it. Whatever. And I was like, man, this bitch. <laughs> and I, I was about to tweet some shit that would sound real misogynistic. Yeah, because that was my initial like. Man, fuck you! And then, like, if I'm being honest, the only reason I even <laughs> think about you is because you're kind of attractive. No. But then I was just like, nah, because I got to be better than that, you know? Like, I, I I can't like call them on shit like that and then turn around and do it too, but feel like I'm doing it in the name of justice or some shit <laughs> like that. So I, I had to just let that walk. I I have I will call Trump a bitch. I like it. you you approach it like a bitch because you are a bitch, Trump. Like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, it, you know what? Like, um, I like I talked about in the last episode. Uh, it might be the last episode. Uh, I don't know how how these bitches go in order. I, I have no problem like using a masculinity in an argument or, or a threatening manner, but misogyny is kind of where I'm starting to draw my my personal line. Yeah. I mean, I don't have that problem on social media, baby, because like I don't, I'm not I, like some people use that as a as a outlet. Like, I got to be sitting there. Most of the time, I use it as a more of a TV outlet. Like, oh, shit, what happened to Jake on the, on Jake and the Fat Man? Um, but, like, it's, I'm glad I don't have Twitter fingers. Like, um, like I just, I'm just not used to using my outlet about that. I, I'm, I'm probably going to die from an ulcer because I'm all, like, anything that's going on, I'm like, oh, that's okay. Man, the blocking <laughs> the word Trump from my Twitter feed made it so much better. And then I knew something had to have gone down because when I woke up this morning and I saw seeing people talking about it, someone saying something about shitty countries, I was like, "This motherfucker done did it again." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "And but he's found a way to get around my Trump block." <laughs> yeah, and it was funny. Like I guess he didn't admit to saying it or something like that. Like he'll be like, "Oh, I said some shit, but I ain't say that shit." <laughs> he Trump is just like that old uncle that you really don't fuck with, like. Yeah, he married to my aunt, but we don't fuck with him. He mostly sit in the garage and drink while the rest of the family eating dinner. Like, <laughs> always got something to say. Don't never get you nothing for your birthday. Um, <laughs> like, you know, you see him at the grocery store and say what's up, but then that's it. Give you advice you didn't ask for. Yeah. Like, uh-uh. Like, you know, call your girlfriend ugly. And somebody, what? What the fuck? Uh, Auntie Jane ugly. What you, what you? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always something. <sighs> I will say this about that shit. I, like, everyone's a lot of people defending it. Of course, are missing the point. They're like, oh, he, he swore. Like, no one's ever swore. No, that's not the fucking point, motherfucker. Oh, well, those countries are so great. Why do you think they want to come here? Also, not the point, motherfucker. He shit on the people. The people. All yeah. right. He didn't make a distinction between Norway and Haiti. Uh, he didn't Haiti because he thinks Norway is such a better country. It, it's because he's fucking racist. Let's be honest. He could have picked. 
a, any other non-white country to say what a great country like Japan. I, um, I want some blonde hair, blue eyes in this bitch. Yeah. Bring them on. No. Fuck you, Trump, you bitch. Add that to this whole new Russian anchor baby thing that uh, came out this week as we record this. Week, and I'm all fucked up over this. Have you heard about this? No. It's an industry, a cottage industry that has sprung up of Russian women coming to Miami, of all places, to give birth. So their children are American citizens. And they can stay in America that way. The shit that the Mexicans were getting blamed for. Yeah. It's always that shit. It is always them projecting. They think Mexicans are doing it because they know Russians is doing it. So they think everybody must be doing it. They think the world has to be gay because a lot of times they are gay and they get found out later in life. Every motherfucker who talks the worst shit about gay people might piss that show ass. I know in your heart of hearts, you like dudes. You are too anti-gay to not be gay yourself. And you look like a little bitch. <laughs> that has nothing. You give a you. bitch a bad name. That has nothing to do with your sexuality, sir. I just I can't, wish you go ahead and I can't be closet. having dinner with other ladies because I want to be having dinner with the men's folk. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, they could, they are consistently at the party of projection. They always they, they, if, if they saying that shit about you, it's because they doing it. Wasn't that that Bishop Manning, the the homophobic one, who's like. Uh well yeah we all you know we we all have these temptations you know and like no we don't because I'm not attracted to men you have those temptations you feel bad about them so you're gonna shit on gay people that's what the fucking thing that's, is that's exactly what it is so like I said fuck the party that party of of, of projection because they can't help themselves and uh, this- so since they're so racist did that mean they want black dick I'm telling you I'm already I'm telling you already dick. if you if you wouldn't look he at- is yeah who um. The dude from um, Hot 97, what's his name? <laughs> no, that's... Uh, uh, Charlamagne the, the guy? He, from, he ain't from Hot. Don't disrespect Hot like that. Okay. He's okay. from uh, Power 101, uh, whatever, whatever. He's from Power. And okay. I hope she ain't... De- or, I don't know. Maybe. It's a non-famous black dude. Uh, no, dude, everybody knows Charlamagne. All we have to do is like... <laughs> that's who she dated, though? No, I'm just saying... No, like, she's, she's dated a non-famous <laughs> black dude. Uh, anybody gets a chance to meet this guy, you know, just uh, take a flash picture of him. Look, what's what, what's his name? What's the, what's, what's <laughs> See how he reacts. What's the motherfucker? Milo? He married to a black man. It's just... It's, it's, Who is Milo? Milo, you're not going to look The gay this? Nazi dude. The gay Nazi? We're going to call him the gay Nazi. Okay. If I can make that my show title, <laughs> it might be. But, like I said, these dudes are just, they just, they're, they're trash people. I'm from the rip. And yeah, so... Trash people got no reason... Trash why people. did you make that song? Just why? Why do you have to disrespect short people? Especially now we know the most short people out there was balling out in L.A. So he was in the whole. He was he was in the region where short people was doing the damn thing. He's projecting. Yeah, that's a good ass documentary if, if you guys can watch it. Uh, <laughs> it's levels. <laughs> it's levels to that shit. Um, yeah, I guess I guess nothing. I mean, they're doing it since nine eleven. They like we gotta watch the Mexican border just in case terrorists come through that way. When most they came, likely, they came we, through Canada. Yeah, they came. They, they would come the other way because why not? It's easier to get across the border that way. Plus, me, plus, oh my god, my, my, my head gonna explode. I can't even fuck with this shit. Story time on lunchbox. What you got for me, baby? It's been a long time since so I got to throw that one out there. Tell me a story, box, please. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Anthony's topic always veers off into these these places, man. That's why I put him up first. It's always has <laughs> been that way. He will, he, will, he, will, he will guide us places, and it always ends up being interesting. And I dig it that way. Well, I mean, these uh, these uh, racist whites uh, dating or marrying black people, that doesn't apply to me uh, being racist against uh, white people, right? I can still say I'm not racist against white people. I have a white wife. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you no. can say that. <laughs> I don't think you can. All right, well, from both spot, from both a black man and a, a white man, I got to know. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's some, some underlying issues here now. Yeah, but you know, but you know, we recorded an episode before that. Uh, I think a study recently came out that says you're more racist while you're drunk. Hmm. Well, yeah, because I mean, when you're drunk, you're supposed to. It's like truth serum. You just say what you feel. So in reality, you just racist. You just let it out. Hmm. Let's just be real. So I, I don't. You, you, do you, I hate you sleep? That's you why what? Uh, I go to sleep when I'm drunk. And as we know, <laughs> my man was drunk. Call him up, little kids crackers. I don't hate white people. Are you sure? Yes. 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 That's what. That's what I want. I look white. I hate my you skin. Hate yourself. <laughs> I hate my white teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my white shoes. <laughs> I hate my car because it's white. So, I'm just. I'm. 
I'm not saying you don't. I hate salt because it's white. <laughs> Milk always. Done I hate got a undriven side snow. <laughs> <laughs> Milk always done got a little side eye from me. That's why vanilla ice cream is not my first choice. No, <laughs> we take we took vanilla back, as you understand. So, don't oh, that's right, that. that's right. That's well, right. Yes. Vanilla needs to start. Uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't want. I, I didn't want to go down another path. Yeah. I stopped myself. You started walking, but you're like, no, no, no. So hey, guy, what's going on with you? Uh, I mean, if you want to know what's going on with me, I'm uh, really getting into home ownership. Yeah, I, no, it, it, it's a year plus, but you have arrived. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's interesting. Um, when I originally stepped into this world, it, it like all right. If I really want to like summarize it right now, I truly am starting to feel like an adult, and it's probably a late arrival considering I'm 32 now. But it's, it's I'm becoming self aware of it, okay. and it's kind of interesting. Where like before, I would just let everything around me kind of just my my habits were everything around me crumbles, and then six months in, I go, oh shit, there's a bunch of crap here. I should probably clean it. And then I'd have one day where I just get like hyper focused, and I take care of everything, and then the whole place would be spick and span, and it would stay like that for like two weeks, and then eventually it would just start to fall off, and the cycle would repeat itself. So I would just continually like mess it up and then clean it, but now it's like like things happen around here where I'm like I'm trying to be more on top of it, and I'm like being proactive with things, and I'm kind of like organizing things, and I have plans for stuff, and it, it's exciting that I have things to look forward to and things I want to do, and like right now um, I want to kill the gray cat that's upstairs uh, because when I came home yesterday he has this habit. The sink that was installed by the previous owner in the kitchen is one of those push sink nozzles where, like, it's not the twisty twos. Mm -hmm. It's the one that controls both the hot and the cold. Yeah. He goes up there and he headbutts the fucking nozzle and turns the water on because he wants to drink out of it. But then, like, he doesn't know how to turn it off. So I came home yesterday, and the water in the kitchen sink was going full blast. Oh, wow. For God knows how long. Fuck that cat. Yeah. I was going to say, I respect that cat's genius to go and turn the water on for him. So if, he, if you could get him to turn it off, he'd be perfect. Yeah, just just, or if just because they do something bill, sweet, don't mean. That'd be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you tell that motherfucker to get a job. You got to film him doing it, right? Catch him on camera doing it. Put it on YouTube, see if you can get him monetized, and see if you can make a couple bucks off of that. <laughs> I, I had a, like a video up on YouTube. I think uh, yeah, there's a couple of them laying of him laying in the sink. I don't remember what channel it's on. I'll have to look those up. But yeah, they were they also hard. It's because when I was uh, those are still up. <laughs> um, there there is a channel somewhere of him where like when I was in the apartment before I bought this house of him laying in the bathroom sink mm -hmm. and me turning the water on on him. Oh yeah, and like just like let it kind of dribble over him, him being like, I yeah. Don't care. Well, he 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 likes uh, when you're in the bathroom taking a dump, coming and knocking <laughs> on the door. So like I let him in, you know, like especially like in the morning before I'm getting in the shower. Yeah. And there was one afternoon like on a weekend where it was like you know I was I'm always a late starter on the weekends, and I was getting showered like in the afternoon because I had to go somewhere, you know. And he came in the bathroom and he was just hanging out, and I had the shower going because I was letting the water warm up, and but I don't I don't put it scalding, you know. So, like, he was, like, looking at the water. So, I was like, oh, I'm going to use this opportunity. So, I picked him up, and I held him under the shower water. And, I like, I soaked him, and he started flipping out. So, I put him down. He ran through the house, like, shaking like a dog and shit, you know? What does a cat knocking on the door sound like? Like, scratching. Oh, okay. It's not like it's not like Sheldon Cooper or some shit, you know? <laughs> It's like, he, co he comes to the door, and he just, like, paws at it. So, it just sounds like wood scratching. Lunchbox. <laughs> Lunchbox. Let me in. I want to watch you poop. Let me in. I want to watch you poop. <laughs> Just to smell it. But he's the only spices. one who he's the only one who does it. So I, when it happens, I immediately know who it is. Yeah. You know, because the the calico girl, she just basically sleeps all day, and then the the black one, he he waits. He, he's patient. He'll, he'll get you on the on out when you come on out. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, at this point, like I'm like I'm getting into home improvement in a way, like. I've never in my life have I actually had to care about the residence I was in, really, mm -hmm. because it, like it wasn't my house; it was my parents' house, or I was renting or whatever. So like, I never really thought like, "Oh shit, the sink's been backing up a little bit. I need to learn how to turn the water Sleep. off, and then learn how to take the piping off so I can go in there and clean it." Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I have that thought about the upstairs bathroom sink right now. Like, 
man, I, next weekend when I have some time, I'm going to actually figure out how to do this myself. Or, you know, yesterday I was like, man, I got to get a fucking, I got to change the sink back to the, the two nozzle variety so he stops doing this. Like, before I would have just been like, ugh, fuck that cat. And then I just kept it going. But now I'm like, I have to remedy this situation, make it better, because, like, I can't keep trusting that people are going to remember to put the fucking towel back over the nozzle so he can't lift it. It's not even that. It's like, if, like, what if there's, I'm not saying your sink is dirty, but if something was in the sink and clawed yeah, the sink and up, then he would flood the house. Flood the goddamn crib. Yeah, yeah. so. Mm. It's, yeah, so that's the thing. I don't know. Like I said, I feel like this this section has oftentimes become become uh, as you grow through home ownership, just grow. It's just self reflective. Yeah. really what it comes down to. Because I mean, I, I haven't had anything truly crazy happen. I would say, like, I trolled my aunt a little bit the other day. Like, life's been pretty steady. Like, yeah. nothing, no, not too many ups and downs at the moment. It's just, yeah, just been. Uh, you know, holidays came, so I've been working on paying off credit card debt and everything. You know, but. It's just, you know, bowling. It, it's nor it's business as usual. Yeah. With just, you know, home ownership growth. Like I I got like the smoker that I bought and I got all these, you know, accessories for it and stuff and I'm planning on really getting into that, like all the hot sauces that I bought and like just so I've been exploring, exploring that world and I I have things around here that I've changed a little bit. Like I, you know, I finally put the curtains up in the living room so the living room looks a little different, but you know, there's still things around here I want to do, but it's just a process that I've really kind of come to enjoy. I dig it. But it also kind of makes me, like, I mean, not to, to put a little, little bit of a bow on it, to think about what would happen, like, in the future. You mm-hmm. know, like, like what are my longer-term goals, which I haven't really figured out yet, but I'm kind of starting to think about that in a way. Like, you know, I do all this around here, but, like, to what end, you know? I think you still got other steps to go because... In about five years, all these motherfuckers will be moving out. You'll be moving away. Well, that's, that's that's what I'm talking about. Is like you know, like it's fine for now, but I know it's not going to be like that forever. No, because like you live near school. I, I I thought about that on the way here. Like this would probably be a perfect area for like uh, not necessarily a starter home, but like if you um, if you do want to get married, it's still a, a perfect basement for you, and you got enough room for 1.5 kids and all that shit. Like, this still my man came. I don't care if you move in here or not, Sally. You. <laughs> oh, if I got married and she wanted to live here, like, she didn't want to go, like, get a different home, I would want to keep this the way it is, and then she could do whatever she wanted upstairs. I don't give a shit. Mm. Okay, you hear that, Sally. <laughs> I mean, that's really how it is. Like, the living room, I'm, like, I had some stuff up there that was kind of, like, man cave-ish mm-hmm. that I didn't want there necessarily just when we I moved in. That was kind of where we laid it down when, you know, we were putting shit away. Mm-hmm. And I never really moved it. So now I'm trying to get... I want, like, the upstairs to be kind of neutral. Like, like just a normal home. And I want all the nerdiness and the, the frills and everything to be in the basement. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if I were to get married at some point, someday maybe, and sh- whoever this person is wanted Sally, to... Sally, well, Sally. Yeah, for the sake of this... Would it be really fucked up if you mess somebody next, Sally? I'm going to go with Roxanne. <laughs> Neither of these are good, but... Is she I'm thinking, going with a girl named Sally whose middle name is Roxanne. Is she thinking her name is Sally? Why, they sound white to you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I don't think you... I, I, I think you would probably uh, marry like uh, somebody in between. Like, uh, no, not white, not black. <laughs> like white and black? And probably white, black, and Hispanic. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody who's like... Um, I am into the mutts. But, but, uh, oh. Is that a PC word? No, we still throwing. I would think no, because I thought I don't like mutt, not like mutt in like a bad way. Like they're like wordless, like mutt, and like they are not one thing. Like mutt is like a combination of things, like speech, like uh, like a butt. <laughs> no, like like if you have like seven different nationalities, like you're technically considered a mutt. They do that person Rick, that 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 lady who was a poo acted who was Persian on. Whose character was Persian on the Punisher? Oh, Thank you, because it was not coming down. Yeah, I, was I like, saw what it. What the fuck is going on with that? So what is she for real? Turns out she is from England. Mm-hmm. Her father is of Irish and uh, I was like Senegalese. No, some from Africa. Okay. It was all kinds of descent. And her mama was Jewish, but from like somewhere else too. So it's like. Yeah, so that's like someone I would consider like a cultural mutt. 
not in like like they're like a bad person or like I think low of them. It's just there's so many different things there that it's like you have a variety. Yeah, like you're not like 100 percent Irish. You're like all these different things. Let's don't get mad at lunch. He means mutt in a in a, in a good way. Milf means muck. He likes to. Yeah, fuck. like I mean, like I'm not trying to sound ignorant no, no, no. here, but like, it, like who considers mutt a derogatory term? Oh, they like, do. We, have, we have a mutt dog in my parents' we house. Puerto Ricans a mutt race. Can, can, uh, can, like, I don't like, know who we like them weird people who want purebred dogs are offended by mutts. But let me tell you something: purebred dogs oftentimes get sick from various diseases and stuff like that. There, mutts are usually usually kind of like the best of both worlds. So if my dog is, let's say she actually is a, uh, a mix of uh, Chihuahua and Pug, she don't get the weird squinty eyes that Pugs get that can fuck their eyeballs up. Pug, pugs regularly, I guess, can lose their eyes. She don't got the weird shakes that Chihuahuas have. Kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, I, I, I've always liked mutts because they're cheaper. Yeah, like the, the German <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> the German Shepherd in my parents' house like is technically a mutt. Like He's predominantly labeled as German, but he's, he's not full German. He's a mutt. Yeah, so... Respect, I respect it, man. I just like I said, I respect your growth as a person. I always like to talk about it. I like that you share with the listeners. I think they like finding out, like, oh shit, what's going down in boxes? Yeah, world? I wish that like I could give them something crazy. They're like, I was there at this, and then this happened, man. And then you wouldn't believe this shit. You can talk about that you were at the Browns of zero and sixteen parade. I can do that. If, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So look, sure. you got a little bit of growth as a person. You can hear some wild out shit for the city of but Cleveland. I will say that last uh, little story though gave me a great idea for a toast. May your ups far exceed your downs. L'chaim. To life. like that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I went to the Browns parade. For those who are pro- unaware, like I don't know how you could be, but the, the Cleveland Browns football team did not win a single game this regular season. They went 4-0 in the preseason and promptly went 0-16 in the regular season. So there was a running joke the previous season that if they went winless last year, that we would throw an 0 and 16 like a perfect season parade, and the Browns ended up winning in Week 15, so they went 1 and 15 last year. Uh, so there was no parade, and then when it started again this year, uh, it, it was happening, and we were like, "Oh my God, here we go again!" And eventually, the Browns fell to 0 and 16, um, and the parade that like. I imagine that no one really wanted to happen, happened, and it it felt kind of therapeutic, where I went there expecting, like, basically a lot of just anger and vitriol, and it kind of became like a therapy session where it was people got to, yeah got to vent their frustrations, and have some fun at the same time with people who are going through the same thing. Now, I root for the Browns, but they're not like my, my top team. Like the Cavs are always going to be my favorite team. The Indians are number two. The Browns are third. And, but I still felt like I kind of wanted to be involved. Like I just wanted to witness it all and everything. Cause the, the temperature that day, and it's funny that this happened, but the temperature was zero with a, a wind chill of negative 16. So it was kind of ironic that it was happening on the day of the 0-16 parade. But the whole thing about it was there was like a vocal set of fans that were for the parade. And then there were a vocal set of fans that thought the parade was stupid and that it was going to be embarrassing to the city. And angry about it. Angry. Like threatening violence. And mm-hmm. you, know, you know how people are with their empty threats. Fuck boys. But, um, Bitches. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> Masculine. <laughs> Masculine, you. Yeah. But uh, I, I kind of was worried because I know how, like, some people can take it too far. And there, there might be a fight that broke out or anything like that. But So I, I, I talked about going last year, but, you know, it didn't happen. And then when it came up this year... I kind of wavered on it because of the temperature, mm-hmm. but I was like, you know what, this this pro- hopefully will never happen again, and I'm kind of curious to see what they do, because I saw some pictures of the people who were working on floats for the parade on Twitter, and I was like, this seems interesting and creative, I kind of want to see it. So I got together with a couple friends, and I braved the cold, I, uh, I layered up that day, I put on some sweatpants under some jeans, I doubled up on the socks. I had a shirt on, a hoodie on, a thermal on, a winter jacket. I had gloves on. 
I had a scarf wrapped around my face. I had a Cavs hat on. Like I went out there full bore, man. And you must be worried about your hair that day. No, nah, not at all, man. And I, like I took my hat off too when like when we went to a, a bar afterwards. And, it was and I was sweat. I had sweated through my hair, man. It was soaked. Like I looked like I'd been in a sauna. So I knew my hair was jacked up, and I didn't care. I, mean, I have shitty hair anyway, and I need a haircut really bad. So it, it was gonna look bad regardless. But so. We got there about eleven thirty. We took an Uber downtown and uh, we walked over. It was cause which I thought was a really smart idea. I hadn't even yeah. thought about that. Yeah, like I, I wanted to drive down just because I, you know, like I'm weird about getting in other people's cars, yeah. especially like Ubers. Like I don't know those people, and it's weird to me just hopping in the back of a stranger's car. Yeah, but just to think about it. You. Like when you were uh, rape Uber, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, think happened. about that. It has happened. Yeah, me. I mean, I don't know if it. Just talk about himself specifically. Look how handsome he is. Well, I was just talking about oh, like, especially like if like I didn't if, used to be beautiful. I, I am beautiful. I was thinking about um, <laughs> like if something happened, like you're not the first person to get attacked. That's why you bring up. Well, people probably not. But I mean, I, rape isn't my fear. But I know it has happened with Uber. I was just thinking more like or car or ride sharing. We'll say not necessarily Uber. I imagine it happened cross platform. True. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so we, we took an Uber down there, and I say Uber because that was actually the platform my friend ordered it on. And we got let out in front of the courthouse, and we walked down to West 3rd there to over to the stadium. And, you know, man, those T-shirt vendors, man, they don't miss an opportunity to be oh, out there. I know it. Yeah, dude's on the bridge. Fucking perfect season shirt. Fucking Browns 0-16. Woo! Buy a shirt. And I'm like, nah, bro. I'm oh, fat. You, you guys don't carry uh, big man sizes. But, um, plus, I'm not going to wear brown. Brown's not flattering. <laughs> <laughs> we, and so we get over to the stadium, and uh, the police are over there kind of, like, directing traffic away because the street's blocked off, and there's a line of cars because you, you can register your car to just drive in the parade, and then there's a line next to it that's, uh, well, it's, like, two lines on both sides that had, like, quote-unquote floats and, like, you know, there was like the WMS like rover bus there or whatever the hell it is, and I, I saw no footage of this parade as of yet. So describe these floats to me. Uh, all right, so there was and the the couple of the floats were like floaty. A couple of them were just vehicles with stuff, but so there was a dump uh, dumpster like there was a garbage company that had taken one of their dumpsters and painted it like brown and orange, and then they wrote like. <laughs> Oh, and 16 Browns on the side of it, and they put Super Bowl 20, question mark, question mark, you know, that kind of shit. There was a funeral company that had put a casket in the back of a truck and had someone sitting in it. Um, there was... Someone had taken, like, a flatbed that, like, you'd use to, like, transport or something, and they made it look like... They put AstroTurf down on it and made it look like a football field. They had built a goalpost on the end of it. Then they had a toilet sitting in the middle of it, I had people sitting on it, and while they were driving, they had two dudes walking next to it. And I and I saw this in a video app that was done like a kind of like a after the fact where they interviewed the guy who like put this all together, and he said that he specifically told them not to do this, but they went and did it anyway. So he was pissed when it happened, but in retrospect, it was actually pretty cool. Mm. So they had two people walking next to the truck with leaf blowers that had attachments on the end to put toilet paper on, so they would shoot the toilet paper up into the air. So that was pretty cool. There was one where they took a flatbed, and they strapped an inflated swan to it, and they had a guy riding on it with a bottle of Jameson, and he had painted a number two tramp stamp on his back. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There was just, like, a couple of people who had, like, their tailgating buses drive through, with people throwing out candy and stuff, and... Um, there was one guy who was walking in the parade, and he was in a speedo, oh wow, boots and ski goggles, and he was smoking a cigar and he was carrying a flag. I don't know how that guy is alive. American flag or uh, it was American flag, and he had an American flag speedo, so he was violating the flag code. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, how un-American of him. <laughs> he but, wanted he wanted women in the. Uh, but the, the, there's the probably a strong stretch. possibility that that gentleman has frostbite right now. Because it was every bit of zero. Like, the scarf that I had wrapped around my face had ice building on it from my breath. Like, it was serious out there that day. It was right up on the lake, too. Right? Yeah. Because so, that's, that's where our stadium yeah. is placed in this uh, town. Our football stadium, not all yeah. our stadiums. And then there was a group that went through that my buddies actually ended up walking. Because any pedestrian could join the parade. 
they joined in. There was like a, it was almost like a troop leader kind of deal where he was on the megaphone and he was saying shit, and then the like the group was like repeat like saying shit back to him. It was like, when we want wins, and when do we want it? We want them now, that kind of shit, you know, like drill sergeant type shit. So uh, then, like some cars drove through, they didn't really have anything. So there was like one dude in a hot hot dog suit and like, <laughs> stuff, and, like a like a ghost Browns outfit or some shit, and. Uh, it was. It didn't last very long. It was the the whole party well, yeah. itself was maybe like a half hour, and um, but it was fun. You know, nothing. No one attacked anyone. Like I saw, there was a woman there in Steelers gear, kind of like. See, that's the thing. You know what this parade's about. You know what we're doing. And you show up in your fucking Steelers gear with your signs, like trying to promote your team. Like get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm not usually like, oh, fuck the Steelers and the people. I hate Pittsburgh. But, like, why are you coming here and being like, oh, look at me. I'm a Steelers well, fan. Your team sucks. Like, that's that's how I see people could get jacked in the face. Like, yeah. she's probably lucky that she's an older woman. Oh. If it was a young dude. The worst like, kind of woman. Yeah, older woman. Fuck you. <laughs> no, but, like, if it had been, like, a younger dude, that dude probably would have got his jacked. ass a little bit. Yeah. yeah. She's lucky she was an old bitch. <laughs> she was an old, crusty bitch. Um, but yeah, like it, it, it ended up being a, a fun little time, and then honestly, like the way I am with things nowadays, like I kind of want to like go for the event and then just go home. Get the story out of it. Yeah, but then like I have like that group of friends who it's like the end of the parade isn't the end of the excursion; mm-hmm. it's the beginning of the after party. Whereas like I just wanted to come home because it was fucking zero degrees. I had shit that I wanted to do that day. And I'm like not much for going out really, if I'm being honest. They they wanted to go day drinking at some breweries, and I was like, you know what? I haven't seen you guys in a bit. You know, I can do this stuff later on when I get home. Yeah, I'll go to a brewery. So we walked over to Lakeside, and there was some brewery there. I I've, I'd have to look up the name of it. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I keep forgetting, and I wish I remembered it because their IPA was actually really good. I actually checked into it on Untapped. If anyone wants to follow me on Untapped, if you use that app out there. Uh, same name, Lunchbox2099. Um, you know, go ahead and friend me. Uh, toast me a little bit. But I checked in on their IPA there. It was really good. Like, really, really good. I was thoroughly impressed. And then we bundled back up and we hoofed it over to uh, Masthead Brewery, which I'd never been there before. I essentially went to four bars in, the, in this afternoon that I'd never been to before. Masthead, their beer was just okay. Like, I... If we're doing my 3.5 to 5 scale, I think I gave their beer a 3.5. Like, it was okay, but it's nothing I would probably seek out. It's a fair But their thing. pizza was very good. I was, I, like, my buddy, and he didn't even tell us that he ordered. He got ordered two pizzas and put them on the table for everybody. So I was, and I was, I was kind of hungry at that point, so I was kind of happy about that. And I was thoroughly impressed. Like, it was a tasty pie. Like, they used really thin crust, like, almost like paper. Mm. And they had like it had the mozzarella on it was really fresh. Like it tasted, it tasted pretty good. Delicious mozzarella. <laughs> and then we went over to Hofbrauhaus, House, which I had been to before, but I'd never actually had anything there because I went there the day that it opened. And qu- qu- uh, coincidentally enough, I had to leave early to come do this show, so I never actually got to order anything. And <laughs> so. I ordered a beer. I had one of them. It was like winter schneisen or some shit. I don't know how to say Oh, schneisen. It. Oh, schneisen. <laughs> and uh, I ordered a pretzel. Like, they had like giant pretzels there with like beer cheese or something like that. That is what uh, Germany's known for. Yeah, so. Other things. And then, like, so I wanted to try something, even though I wasn't going to have a full meal. And, man, this is where, like, it really started to sink in for me how, like, I'm happy that I'm kind of growing up because, like, my one buddy that was with us, I started to really see the, like, struggle within him of letting go of the the party life. Oh. Like, he... <clears throat> I don't want to make it seem like I'm talking, you know, greasy about my boy. But when I met him, uh, I want to say at this point it was like, seven, eight years ago now. So I've known this dude for almost a decade. And when I met him, he he owns a house in Lakewood, and his house was kind of known as the frat house. 
it was where like he had all his all the roommates and it was the, where the house where all the parties were at and everyone showed up and it was the hookup house and everything but over time you know he his friends are all moved out and they have girlfriends and they bought houses and they're they're you know working jobs and he's kind of stuck in this like in between mm-hmm. where like he's just graduated college and he's kind of started working but it's not really like going yet and like he's in a relationship but I'm not even sure that like he really cares about this person <laughs> if I'm being honest because I've never met her I just like he just starts yeah, and that is a sign that he doesn't care about her um, well, no, I mean, I don't hang around with him all the time. Like, I see him, you know, every now and again. It's not like, like you guys where I see you all the time. Yeah. But, um, so, like, I don't know how he actually feels about her. Uh, so it's like, you know, everyone else is, you know, busy doing things, and then he just wants to go out and, like, drink and, like, mingle with strangers and, like, all this stuff, and everyone else, like, we're just like, dude, like, we're tired. <laughs> like, how much more do you want to do this? <laughs> like, yeah. It, it. Yeah, life, life is exhausting. Like, um, <clears throat> my friend had posted that he's, I'm going to go see um, Black Panther, you know, Thursday night at 10 uh, or whatever. I was like, man, I ain't. I'm in bed by 10, 15. Yeah. That's how everyone's like, oh, you're going to go see it opening night? And I'm like, I don't see any movie opening night because I have a job and I'm tired. And, I'm like, like I want to be able to enjoy the experience. I don't want to sit there for two and a half hours fighting my desire to sleep. And not only that, I think that the movie, uh, do it on purpose now, they got those big-ass luxurious seats. You put your feet back. It's not... Yeah. It used to be cold as fuck. Shit, I used to fall asleep. Like, I... I like, I... I told you everyone on the show I went to Captain America the very first one and I didn't see the end of the movie because I passed out and that was in the old rickety ass chairs yeah that's how they get you to come back to see that yeah I'm like, you, see the parts you gotta buy it on DVD you gotta buy it on Blu-ray you gotta watch it on Netflix but you gotta pay for that because you fucking fall asleep in these comfy red leather seats Terrell was laughing because I said the same thing about the Black Panther premiere <laughs> if I'm uh, oh, the father of only three children at, at the time the reason I that's the that's the reason I stopped going to in this case the AMC theaters and I go now to uh, uh, actually the one in Great Northern is the Lick one they don't have a sign seat I know you're thinking that why is that why is that the Lick because I can run in there or send my kids run in there and get my exact seats that I like to sit in before anybody else goes into a movie so when I went to go see Star Wars uh, the, uh, you know what I'm saying Last Jedi I was like Xander as soon as they let you in go and as soon as they did he was like boom had my seats perfectly that's what you need you need a kid. Who's at a, at a good age? My kid's fourteen. This is about the last few times he goes to see movies with me before he's like, "Fuck you, dad! I'm trying to go kick it with these hoes or dudes or whatever comes out of it." <laughs> but Please, he's Terrell, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> but he can go get my he can go he can go get my seats, and so then I'm like, "Puri, I'm gonna sit right here." Uh, movies premiere oftentimes at this point like at seven o'clock on Thursdays. I can kind of do that, but not really. My kid got to be in bed at eight thirty. I'm a dad. Life happens, man. I can't be out here on this strong like that. So I understand. Well, then, like, and that too, like, you go straight from work. I don't want to. Yeah, I would. I would have to go into the movies in my work clothes. You right? I would have to be in in, in khakis and the. Yeah, because I don't get off work till six. A badge on my head. If the movie starts at seven seven thirty, I got to go straight there. So that means I'm not getting dinner. Because khakis are good for going to the strip club, not for the movies. Yeah, you know. Uh, the popcorn trick don't work with khakis. You get butter on there, it looks like you pissed yourself. You've, you've ruined your pants. Yeah. You've ruined your pants. But again, I see, see, oddly enough, like you said, you brought it all together. You are growing as a person. You know that person's growing. It's just that he's growing, kicking and screaming. Well, the whole thing is like, all right, so he had essentially like a running mate. Yeah. And now the running mate is kind of like hitting like that adult stride where like, you know, he's got a house with his girlfriend. Uh, he works all the time. Like, he doesn't go out as much anymore. Like, he still does hang out, but, like, it's not an all-the-time thing. And, like, my buddy's getting drunk, and he's just like, oh, you know, he's coming to get me. We're going to go hang out, blah, blah, blah. And, like, we went from the third the Hoffer House place to the third bar. On the way there, <laughs> on, on the <laughs> way to that, that, that fourth bar, he wandered off. Like, we're walking there. Like, we cut through Playhouse Square. Yeah. They have, like, a hallway that connects from the back to the front. Yes, yes. And there's, like, this old couple that's walking through there. They're getting ready to go to a play. And he just starts talking to them. He drifted. Yeah, he, he's like, oh, we should be friends. Super Bowl, Super Browns. Let's all let's hang out. Like, oh, how you guys doing? And, like, 
they're just trying to mind their own business and get to where they're going, <laughs> and it's, it, like they're making him feel uncomfortable. And then we get outside the building, and he just starts. Every person who walks by, he feels the need to want to talk to them. Mm. It's like he needs that attention. And me and my other buddy, like we were not drinking as much as this dude was, because he like he ordered like the liter cup, and I got like the half, and like no. he got he the had, shoe, he got he, the boot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he wanted to. He did the. He wanted to ski, like the the shot ski and all that shit, like. Yeah. So, like, and I knew I would be driving at some point, so I stopped drinking. Yeah. So I'm completely fine. And we're like, what is with this dude? Like, why is he bothering everyone walking down the street? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, that stop. Sounds, sounds very familiar, familiar for him. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it's a thing. Like, he just needs to create social interaction because it's what he craves. I do with the same thing with the dude who lives here. He can't just, like, go have a beer, be quiet, leave people alone. He just got to start chatting with every soul that walks in, or like he's got to be on Snapchat, sending people pictures, or saying weird shit to people on dating sites. Like he can't ever just like be within. He's always like as soon as that alcohol hits the lips, it's like he's got to spread his mental seed to the entire <laughs> world, like a fucking just like pollen in the air. Like I need the attention of everyone around me. Social skeet skeet skeet. Yeah, it's social skeet skeet skeet. And I just don't get it. Like, I mean, I understand <laughs> being more open when you're drunk, but like, I don't hop on my phone and like start like sending shit to people where the next day, like, when I wake up, I don't know what I did and I got to check my phone, you know? Yeah, I, I blame the, um, those hangover movies for that. <laughs> but like, so we go to the bar, he, get, he wanders off. We don't know where he went. <clears throat> so like, my buddy calls him and he's just like, Hey, where are you? He's like, oh, our buddy, my buddy's coming to get me, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm waiting on him. So then we call that dude. He's like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm at work. I have not talked to him. He's like, I get off work in a half hour. I'm going to go home and shower, and then I'm going to this trivia thing at a bar. Like, <laughs> So like, we call him back, and he's just like, oh, no, I called an Uber. I'm okay. So <laughs> my buddy Ryan calls him, and he's like, or he's like, Stay where you are. We're to get in the Uber with you. Just where are you? And he's just like, or he couldn't tell him. He didn't know. <laughs> so he's like, just go back to the chandelier. We'll meet you at the chandelier. A little kid. Yeah. So then, like, we're walking, and <laughs> he calls him back again just to make sure that he is like where he's supposed to be because he's kind of like I hung up on him, and he's just like. Oh, no, he's coming to get me. And he's like, stop lying. We talked to him. He's not coming to get you. Like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> what? Why did he say that shit? Because I think deep down he desperately wanted to will it to happen. Because he wanted that kind of like party life wingman that he's had, you know, for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. And so he's just like trying like to just, it's a, it's the deep down desire coming out because all the alcohol, you know? Mm. So we get back to where, like, the chandelier is over by Playhouse Square. And I could see him across the street because he's the only giant Viking-looking motherfucker walking around in <laughs> Browns gear. And uh, he's, like, yelling out shit. And we're all, all the way across the street. We start yelling out, who do? And he's saying it back because we're trying to get his attention, you know? Yeah. So then, like, we see him across the way. And he looks like he's peeing on the, like symbol like the button to get the crosswalk symbol to go he looks like he's peeing on it Ugh. i don't think he did because it was right in front of a convenience store like a fancy looking convenience store so or a coffee shop or something i don't think he did it but it, he looked, it looked like he looked like he was doing the motion but i don't know was his dick out i didn't see it but we were across the way like diagonally kind of far so like and it's brown and orange so you really couldn't tell yeah you know, he, is brown horn. he probably painted it. <laughs> for all I know, he painted it. But he comes right across the street, and there's like a hallway right. We're like, we're like, we got to talk about what we're doing. And then he's like, let's go in this hallway. And then I look on the hallway door, and conveniently, the hallway itself is named the Idea Room. So I'm like, yeah, hop in the Idea Room. We got to fucking talk this out. So we get in the hallway, <laughs> and we're like, where the fuck have you been? He's like, oh, I, I no just. Idea. Just waiting on him to come get me. We're like, he's not fucking coming. Tell us the goddamn truth. Where the fuck have you been? And he's just like, oh, I met this girl and she was making out with me. And I was just like, I was like, you're fucking lying. 
What is it with you guys? They were like, when you get like, because I know him and this other guy when they drink. It's like they have this thing in, the, in their minds that like unlock where they feel like they have to have female companionship. It's like I'm at a restaurant with the one dude, and he just starts watching porn in the middle of the restaurant after he's had like two beers. Uh, he's like on, on Reddit. He's or... like on on Reddit and or, it Reddit, or, tum- or Reddit or Tumblr or something. One of those sites, and he's just watching a chick give a blowjob on his phone. On his phone, okay. Just making in sure he's not like the, in the middle of the dining room, and I'm like, then walk up hey, to the, hey, to hey. the, to the first of all, restaurants TV. Good. That happens to me once a day, like <laughs> on Tumblr. Like the other, I was at work at my desk. I was like, oh shit! I was just looking. Yeah, at Yeah, I mean, you when you scroll, it happens. I understand. That's why I had to turn picture preview off on Twitter because I, I you know, that shit pops up. I get it. Mm-hmm. But he was so purposely. Watching it, and oh. I watched it go through the cycle at least three times, <laughs> and, uh, and like waiters and waitresses and shit walk by, and there's other people in the restaurant. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, anyone can see your phone. He's like, no one can see my phone. I'm like, anyone who's standing over your shoulder can fucking see your giant iPhone screen of a woman just sucking on this giant rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God damn, man. You're going to end up fucking jailed and having to like register as a sex offender and shit. You got to register as a sex offender? Does that shit happen? If you're watching porn in public, I imagine you would. I mean, if you if you go uh, streaking in Brown Stadium, you have to register as a sex offender. I'll look that up. But it, anyway, so at this point, we're just like, call an Uber. Like, we, we got to get you back to your house. So he, he calls for an Uber and we get in the car. And he just starts talking about a dude coming over to get him again for, like, to go out. So we had him call dude on his own phone. We put it on speaker. And he's just like, uh, I'm at home now. He's like, I'm about to get in the shower. He's like, was I supposed to come get him? And we're just like, no, like, you weren't supposed to come get him. But he seems to be under the impression that you were going to come get him. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I didn't know that that was a plan. He's like, I can come get him if I need to. But, you know, like that, I didn't know I was supposed to. So it basically came down to where they all agreed to go to that bar. And mm-hmm. I was like, as soon as the Uber the was over. Bar. Yeah. I went home because that was where I wanted to be for like the last six hours. Like Daniel Jones. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, I said my, my goodbyes. Uh, I wish everyone well and safety. And I, I got in my car and I came home and I... Uh, Man, it felt so good to get out of all those layers because I was walking around all day and all that shit, you know? Like, I came home, I stripped down to my, like, the bare minimum, I got on, on the couch, I watched the Cavs game, and I was in bed by 10.30. That was my Saturday, you know? Like, and that, it was fine. But, man, it was it was weird. It was like watching the struggle of someone you care about and, like, <laughs> you can't really do anything about it. You just got to watch them work it out, you know? Yeah. Well, it sounds like a fun Three Kings day. It's always the best when you get stories out with Lunchbox because no matter what he says, it's always into being some of the best shit we do on this show. Just into being some of the most amazing tales. And you didn't think you had a story to go with. <laughs> and you did. Yeah, two. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked up the... Two, yeah. Actually, almost three. Because yeah. you talked about the, the whole third story is about dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cut the bitches up and give you three over some ribs. Spread them over some bunch of shit. <laughs> Spread my verbal seed. <laughs> verbal seed, seed, seed. Look, might have made this two parts. Could not for the life of me remember what the fuck Gabe show titles up. So when I went and got, <laughs> so when I went and got looked up, a, I had to go because I had to go grab an old version of that. And when I saw it, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" It was called that. And you know what this segment was called? Asian people invented fried chicken. Well, my man Gabe, and I can't wait for it. Yeah, we changed it because controversy. But you know, if our president can say what the fuck he wants, I'm just some fucking nobody. I can say something that's not even derogatory. If you're like, offended by like the fact months. you invented, uh, <laughs> but I, I know this for a fact: Asian people invented calzones. Mm. Also, t- pasta and ice cream. At times, it's still a lot from the uh, from the Asians. Uh, still borrowed? No, it just it just it wound its way Co-op- back. Perfected, co-opted. 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 Okay. Uh, as an aside, I did look up the 2008 uh, Lions, you know, because uh, they're another team that went 0-16, hoping we had one up on them, but they also went 4-0 and in their preseason, so we don't have we don't have that. Hmm. I wonder if that's something telling about the... Anyway, go have that, sir. We need an 0-16 team that goes 0-4 in the preseason. 
Yeah, we need to just lose it all. 20 games just down the, down the shitter. <laughs> well, I got quite the treat for our longtime listeners, uh, you new time listeners, or short time listeners, or jive, listeners, jive listeners, forget their listeners, bitch listeners. Oh. Uh, we uh, punk ass <laughs> trick listener. <laughs> What's up, and you, dick and listeners? you skip scap scallywag listeners. Oh my god! And other young punks. You might not remember this, but I have I had a segment that I visited once in a while called Jail Tales. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the bees. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the bees. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the bees. That's the sound of the police. And here is the fourth and final Jail Tale. Now, uh, too bad we can't play uh, fourth and uh, some final? one in the background. <laughs> I can throw, a, I, I, I can definitely throw a little whoop whoop. That's the sound of the police. That's better than him <laughs> going whoop whoop. Uh, leave Rafa from Bobat alone. <laughs> Please get off your knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! For those who got that one, you are quite amused. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Disappointing you, KRS. <laughs> Itchy Bar. Number one rap star. Alright, so, um, this one occurred down in Athens, Ohio, uh, a little town surrounding the Ohio University. Not to be confused with the Ohio State University, this is Ohio University Bobcats in the Mac Division. I, <laughs> the I Mac had, Division. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping to do some Mackin down there, but it was not meant to be. Because. Because I, you know, get drunk and do stupid things. This is the whole running theme of these jail tales. Now I know in us day and age of 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 you know, pushback against the police and everything, a lot of this shit's gonna be like, well, fuck, you didn't get, you should have got shot for that shit, uh, like a lot of people would. But you know, that this, should have. Okay, could could have. have. <laughs> True, and I'll acknowledge that, and I'll acknowledge I have a certain level of privilege because of uh, the way I look. But you know what? I'm just trying to have some fun and share a funny tale. So shut the fuck up. Just show some commentary. All right. Man, you're preemptively angry. Now stay low. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we were at this bar that served the underage kids. And that's how I got drunk. We're at this bar. They, they weren't IDing anybody. Everybody I knew there was uh, underage. And we went there specifically to acquire the fact that this bar served to underage people. So um, it's, it's a place that's shutting down. Uh, I'm having a conversation from this girl I know from high school. I don't know her that well, but I kind of know her. And we're going back and forth. And she said, wait right here. I'll be right back. And for some reason, I just walked away from that conversation. I don't know what that could have turned into. But walking away from the conversation turned into something worse than what anything that could have turned into. Well, not anything. But let's... Uh, could have the like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, five. But, um... I walk out with a can of beer in my pocket because this is the type of bar that serves cans of beers. And I also... What kind of beer was it? Something My guess would have been PBR. Nah, I didn't drink that shit. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Daddy what they, Ice? What did they drink back in the... Uh, 90s? Shit. The early, the early aughts. Um, uh, hey, right. Natty Ice. Uh, was you on that Milwaukee's Bass. Oh, Milwaukee's I Bass. <laughs> Um, <laughs> twenty-seven cans of old Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I walk out this beer in my pocket because you know, I'm my judgment's impaired. The the bar serves cans of beers, and I uh, I wasn't very good at picking out sizes for my pants back then, so they're often loose and look poor on me. Um, <laughs> and and then Were I, you do it by like trial and error. <laughs> like, man, he's forty-eight, so <laughs> little look <more> big. <laughs> But if I, if I I would do that, I'd be like, I just tighten the belt up. This is fine. But it's not it's not like a suit. I'm not going to get measured for a pair of jeans. Well, I mean, I just figure you go to the store and you like try a couple, get like a range, you know. Like I'm somewhere between a 42 and a 36. I would have frequently, and this was a younger me, would wear 40 40 uh, waist pants. You were never 40 waist pants. No, I wasn't. Like ever. Come on, my God. <laughs> Man, were you trying that hard to sag? No, I was, that's the thing. I wasn't sagging. Pull the belt tight. I thought, on. well, you heard of loose-fitting jeans. I thought that's what loose-fitting jeans were. You might as well have had Jankos <laughs> on, man. Jesus. So, I, that's what the belt was for, to keep the pants Did up. Did they have Puerto Rican chuckle lugga 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 lows? Oh, for sure. It, it, 
Everybody, it's a juggalo of all to, or of all sorts. Somewhere in the FBI vaults right ah. now, there's a juggalo report with Gabe's name on it. Yes, they're called hoogalos. But, um... <laughs> Julio. <laughs> but, Tayro, that should have got a laugh, not a disappointed face. <laughs> but, um... Shit, this is just the beginning of the story. I, I, so I'm walking in the street, uh, uh, with a can of beer in my pocket, and I pull it out to start drinking it. <laughs> if you don't know, in Ohio, uh, that's considered open and carry. You can't just drink on the street. I don't know what other states allow or don't allow <laughs> Unless that, you're at a sporting tailgate, because for some reason the rules don't apply there. The, the, the rule is, like, it's too many fucking people to arrest them. We don't have the resources for that shit. Nevada will let you go get your drink on in the, in the streets. Well, we weren't yeah, in Nevada. Uh, Louisiana. Oh, yeah, yep. That's about, you know what I'm saying, down in the quarter. I heard. That's a price. Yeah. Yeah, they encourage it. It's a racket. Yeah, you, like, can, you can get something to drink like your job. The through. whole thing is like built on just bar hopping. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, you don't get busted for like taking a sandwich out on the street. Why can't <laughs> I drink, you can't drink a fucking beer on the street? I eat my sandwiches while I fucking feel like it. <laughs> 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 I want to say nourish. That's my business. <laughs> uh, uh, this chili. I can eat my chili any fucking way I want to. You get out of my fucking face, oh, copper. Brown bag this hot dog. <laughs> I can eat the bun is that, is that and throw my wig. Is that a Puerto Rican penis joke? No. Brown bag hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a short circuit. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> oh shit! Uh, but you know, I do this foolishly, just not being aware of my surroundings and my friends right next to me. Like, hey man, this cop is approaching you. But I'm so fucking drunk and dumb that I'm not listening to him. I'm just sipping, sipping, sipping my beer. And in the most obvious manner, he's like, "All right, man." He, he had to, he had to, he had to hit the eject button and walk away from me <laughs> because he couldn't go down with me. Uh, funny thing later, though, he almost got busted for pissing in public. Ran off, got away from the cop, and, uh, like, jumped a wall. He jumped a wall that is short on one side, and like, uh, boom, boom, on the other side, and he did not expect that fall. He almost fucked himself up. <laughs> but he's alive. And, uh, and, like, look, the, so the cops busted me, and I'm, I'm trying to talk my way out of this shit. Like, no, oh, man, I'm just gonna go, it's like, it's like, uh, it's alright, it's alright, I'm over, I'm gonna go over here. I'll be fine. All right, I'll see you later. All right, I gotta go. I gotta go. Kind of like trying to break off a conversation that won't so, end. You know, what are these fucking B cops with uh, toilet neighbor town and shit like? Hell, hey, hey, old son, what are you doing? What the what the weed be in your pockets? <laughs> Like, they got like the, the bucket helmet. Yeah, they got busted by a and, bobby. And the Jimmy yeah. stick on, on the string. <laughs> oh, is that, what is that? A can of chili you got there? <laughs> and a wee potato. <laughs> and Look, I just did some Irish racist shit. I'm sorry. A wee potato. He hasn't even been drinking. <laughs> oh, is that one percent milk you got yeah. there? <laughs> so I said to the cop, "You cracker." No, uh, but. <laughs> Um, I believe it. <laughs> oh, he, he would only say that if they were five year old kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how old that kid was. Um, but he's a cracker nonetheless. <laughs> he didn't. He was just playing cracker like ten <laughs> uh, <laughs> He was eating a he was eating a roll of cookies out of a brown paper bag. <laughs> That's what them crackers do. <laughs> Bring tried, up the prices. He's trying to commandeer my candy like a cracker would. <laughs> I'm not giving homeless people changes, it's gonna go out and and buy a donut. That's true. <laughs> but, um... It's a sore subject today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting off track. Uh, so, uh, I'm not, I'm not cooperating. I'm not, like, pushing the cop or anything and anything, but I'm not cooperating. I'm just, I, because I don't want to get busted. And eventually, he just, like, fuck this. He wrenches my arm, fucks my pinky up, and puts me in handcuffs. Throws me in the back of the car. All the way up into booking. I'm talking my way out of it. Just trying to tell him, like, I don't know if this is a listen sympathy or not, but, like, I'm too broke to, uh, to incur the fines that will come with this, sir. I don't have much money. I'm just a college kid. Look, I'm not some rich, spoiled kid who's getting their uh, daddy and mommy to pay for college. And it was. That was true. I was paying for my own shit. Uh, but not a very sympathetic man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were breaking the law. Yeah, I was breaking the law, but you know what? 
It's a stupid law. Is it? Is it a stupid law? I think it's... The cop almost broke your jaw. It's put in place to protect those people from themselves because they tend to act before they, they think. And I don't want to be driving around downtown and have some fucker walk into my car because he didn't look before he walked down to the street. Hmm. Yeah, but... All right. Well, I, I agree with the, the thought that it's stupid. And it pro- in some regards, like, I think it works in places like Vegas and New Orleans because those... Or so, Lakewood. I mean, I Lakewood. was underage, too. Yeah, you were breaking... We can establish you were breaking the law. Breaking so, the law. Breaking the law. So, I paid for that beer, though. <laughs> Well, I wanted to we also it. know you're frugal. Yes. <laughs> I don't like things going to waste. Uh, so, they weren't fucking around at this jail. I mean... <laughs> they were raping everybody. <laughs> All right, well then... Well, you built it up a little higher than I was going to build it up. Damn. Okay. That would imply that <laughs> they were... <laughs> that would make it imply that yeah, they, they, they were, were fucking around. around. Uh, <laughs> they were fucking around. <laughs> they were fucking all around. <laughs> Blood is the best lubricant. And reaching around. No. Oh. But I've been to jail before, and it's like usually a cell. This nigga. Oh, yeah. this shit. I've been to jail before. I've been to jail before. I do the fucking. I do the fucking. <laughs> I've been to jail before. It's usually just a cell. Oh, dirty penetrator. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, 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 this was not just a fucking a cell type shit where they just throw you in in your clothes. They made me strip down. No, sure, seriously, strip down in front of a deputy. Take a shower before I put on an orange jumpsuit. Oh man, it's the worst jail cell ever. I thought. Uh, yeah. Did they record it? Did they know. have someone stand to pay attention with their finger in their belly button? Just like, oh yeah, oh. <laughs> that's all nice and deep. Like, get right up in there with that soap. <laughs> I like the way the sun just slide down the crack of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I was kidding around at first, but goddamn, game! Yeah, they, they stripped you down. Is this a me, I, is this a Me Too story? I, I was this, look, I was too drunk to remember. So oh maybe, man, maybe I have some uh, uh, some uh, claims against the. Uh, I want you, County. I want you to flip your penis and put it in your own butt. <laughs> When you talk to me, you tuck your sack back. <laughs> He's like, I'm sick. I feel sexy. Do I look sexy? <laughs> well, uh, what's that? Oh, what's the song? Like a pretty Goodbye, horses. Goodbye, horses. <laughs> I really like, look, man, I don't want... Oh, he was... The, the deputy was getting pissed because I'm like, I don't want to strip down. I don't want to be naked in front of you. Come on. I want to see your butthole. <laughs> and I mean now. <laughs> and I'm like, no. Cough. He's like, come on. Come on. Let's just get this over with. I don't want to do this any more than you do. Like, you seem pretty adamant about it, sir. <laughs> I don't want to record you showing me your butthole. More than anybody else in this room. Now, if he didn't want to do this any more than I did, why was he not as against it as I was? <laughs> I kept saying, look, I'm weird shy here. I don't want to, like, bust this thing out, man. Come on. Leave me alone. So I finally just agreed and did it. And, shit. <laughs> and like, well, no, I'm not. <laughs> it was just, it was seriously, it was just a quick rinse off and I put on a jumpsuit. There was no, like, showing my asshole or, like, uh, coughing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty fucked up. Though. It's traumatizing. I can get that. I was not. It was traumatizing, dude, but it's hilarious now. Yeah. Like, okay, okay, okay. All right, I'll show you my dick. <laughs> my God. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. No. Stop. We were going back and forth a little while. He's getting patient. I was getting. I was scared to like say like. Keep saying no. Wow, this is hmm. That came across <laughs> fucked up. Oh, yeah, it's, it's 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 a lot to be said about that actually. Well, so. luckily I don't remember the rest of the night, or unluckily I don't know. But I, I I don't remember how I got whatever bed they put me in or whatever the fuck. But I woke up the next day and your ass sore throat. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ! You're on fire. I I wake up and it's not like, like I said, it's not like the other jails I've been to. It's like fucking um some Oz type shit where like there's an, a, a general area and there's like 
glass. Uh, they had some gin uh, pop. Jesus yeah, I'm like, Christ. what the fuck is this? I'm looking around, like, where are the other college kids? <laughs> <laughs> why is these a bunch? Why am I by a bunch of grown men? They had you in there with the guy who was fucking a goat. <laughs> but it's not even, like they don't have you in with a guy. It's like there's the, the, these glass pods. Uh, around, uh, surrounding the perimeter, and there's like a general area where people hang out <coughs> and chat. Like that Who That video? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. So it's like I a, remember that. It was, like a, it was a parody of uh, uh, Face Off. So yeah. like an elimination chamber match? Kind of like that. Uh, I woke up, and everybody, I'm wearing orange, everybody's wearing orange. Except the motherfucker across from me. He had a black jumpsuit. I don't know what that meant. He was not a special size. He was a regular size dude. And he looked strung out. He's like sitting in sitting in the bed. And I'm like, hey man, what's up? And he's like, oh man, just oh, so what they get you for? Like, oh just you know, drinking on the street and shit. I didn't try to be cool and like make up like oh I I killed the guy. I killed the motherfucker. With my bare hands. I'm like, no, I was just a college kid just drinking. He's like, yeah, that's that's bullshit. You know, I'm in here because they were accusing me of being strung out on angel dust. And my pro officer, she says I was a danger to society. This a white guy, by the way, if I'm, I'm not trying to do a particular voice. Uh, but, like, and, and, and man, isn't that some... They're just fucking me over. Paul's a racism. I knew that motherfucker was white. As soon as you told me that. Angel dust? Yep. <laughs> and, and, like... Why, dude, the color would have said PCP? <laughs> <laughs> you like to get wet <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah he did look like the motherfucker I never I don't know anything about Angel Dust except like if somebody based on the name this guy looked like he was on Angel Dust <laughs> and and he's like my crew officer just fucking me over and got me back in here because she says I'm in danger to society and I said oh man she's a fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. I understand. You, know, you gotta like make friends with the locals. I get it. Well, what am I gonna do? Like, ah, oh, man, come on, take responsibility for your own actions. I don't think that's. I don't think that's the proper time to say that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna be the guy. Well, to get I get it. Like, guys. you don't know how he's in there. He might already formed a shank. You don't know. <laughs> I, it, yeah. So I eventually get bailed out by my buddies. I had to stay through the weekend to go get arraigned on Monday. Yeah, I'm in this class on Monday. Holy shit. Uh, and I had to get arraigned, and I don't know if it was mayor's court or a judge or whatever, but he was just, like, assembly lining all these pits. That's where the college kids were. They were... <laughs> I got the... Oh, they, they all, were, got, they all this, got bailed out that night. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so, because there was a bunch of college kids getting arraigned with me. I'm like, where were you motherfuckers where I had Angel Dust Dude in front of me? <laughs> Angel Dust Dude. Sorry, that is, if you're you not acting, you can be the like, did you get to know more about him? Like, what was no, 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 I had to, oh, no, I had to stay in Athens. I got bailed, I just said I got bailed out by my buddies, like, a couple hours later. Oh, I Felt long you... as fuck. I'm like, I want to get out of here. Where the fuck are they? Where the fuck are they? So, it was, like, really, but they're like, yeah, they caught, they came and got me. And, uh, I stayed with my friend through the weekend, so I made it rain on Monday. And this judge, or mayor, court, whatever it was, I don't remember, was just assembly line and everybody. And, like, you want to go through the first offenders program. You want to go through the first offenders program. All right, here's the program. Here's the program. Not my fault that this motherfucker didn't ask me or didn't give me the opportunity to say, this is not my first offense, Your Honor. So what am I going to do except, like, get enrolled in the first offenders program? I did some uh, community service at the Cleveland Food Bank. Um, and... Uh, Got it wiped off. Minor infraction. I believe you've done first offenders twice, right? That's my fourth time. Oh, oh shit. shit. I told you there's four jail tales each time. They let you do first offender? Yes. You goddamn criminal. You goddamn criminal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the problem. The system's the problem. You know what it is? It's because they thought you were white. Oh, no. Then they saw that name. Shit. Shit. I, they gave my dad a hard time in North Royalton when they look, looked at the license and saw the last name. He says, and the guy repeated the la- our ne- last name back to my dad and said, you're from White sur- Suburb? <laughs> my dad was furious. White Suburb? It's funny. I heard a similar thing. I was listening to a uh, new podcast uh, that's done by Joe Thomas and Andrew Hawkins. Uh, Joe Thomas, left tackle for the Browns. I was listening to the first show last night. It's the night. right version of road tripping? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were talking last night about fans coming up to them and asking them questions about the football team and expressing their frustrations and shit. Andrew, Andrew Hawkins is like a 
five foot ten black dude. Like he was a receiver here. He just retired uh, a couple months ago, and he said something about uh, he. He's like, I must stand out because I'm like the only black dude who lives in the same white suburb that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, so everyone like I stand out, so people automatically think like, oh, he must play for a sports team. They come up to me, figure out who I am, and then he's like, they complain to me. He's like, I'm not even on the team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I wonder. Look, I know T's assumption is like they're racist, but like maybe this cop was genuinely surprised that someone, uh, a Puerto Rican, was from Charles. Like, man, I thought it was number white people there because I gotta be honest, not very, not a lot of diversity in my high school, and I was like related to half the Puerto Ricans there, mm. all one of them. And uh, <laughs> why are you trying to tell me it's not racist? Well, he's not like he was saying, oh, despite being Puerto Rican, you can afford to live in this white suburb? Good for you. Like, I'm surprised. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. No? You didn't, you didn't prove that case at all. Yeah, um, so that North Royalton cop? He works in North Royalton. Already I'm calling him racist. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you heard it here, for, here, folks. That North Royalton cop, according to T, is a racist bitch. Holy oh, shit. shit. So that was the uh, fourth and final jail time. Unless you want to count this bonus. Well, I didn't go to jail, but I did get... Wow. You went to jail. <laughs> For this fifth tale, I didn't go to jail. Okay. So it's a not a jail tale. Let's call it a bonus running with the police. I think you should save that one. You sure? It's yeah. a quick one. Have we got time. I- I'll leave it to the host. We'll, we'll, we'll get around to it. We, okay, we, teaser, <laughs> folks. <laughs> we'll get around to it. This right here for my, my long term, my old schools, the sleeper hits, the, the Amber P's of the world. We're going to take you down. Remember, to, be listening to our show? She used to. I know she did. Oh, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to give you all a little bit of old school Chesterfields. Dollar store. No, I'm kind of mad about that. Uh, so, the other, uh, we was going to be, um, my segment, I just said fucking scrapped it. But I was thinking about Bull from Night Court. All right. I was like, I wonder if he's still alive. I haven't seen him anything in years. Richard Mole. Yeah, Richard Mole. What 90s sitcom did he guest star in where he played a, a, a neighborhood watch police officer? I've never heard of this. All you gotta do is go hit your 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 your, 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 your uh, internet movie database. And it's a, it's a it's a black um, sitcom. So mm-hmm. hint, and you got a hint. So you gotta do that. Old school, you would have to go hit up Wrath of Chesterfield at gmail dot com. Do not do that. That email address no longer exists. Well, it, it, it exists, but like I haven't used that email address since the Note Seven. That um, <laughs> you know that doesn't even exist. They're like it's like the Chris Benoit phones. <laughs> um, it's so, been erased from, <laughs> from the memory of the of the, of the Samsung Corporation. Yeah. So yeah, hit up uh, ask him or um, hit us up on just, Twitter. Yeah, just hit up. It. No, just for for this particular one. Uh, uh, the subject the subject will be trivia and a podcast. You can DM. Podcast is stacecrunchymilk.com. Nope. We, uh, so, yeah, hit us up there. You will. Here's the answer and a picture of my dick is what you'll get. <laughs> a, a picture of this uh, chocolate. Uh, oh, okay, would, would it be a chocolate starfish or would it be another kind of starfish for Puerto Rican? Yeah, caramel starfish? Uh, caramel, more like a, uh, <laughs> a, a vanilla bean uh, starfish. <laughs> Depends, um, depends on how dark, I guess. Yeah, you will get a prize. Maybe we can. Um, we can, I, I I have one more at home. Uh, maybe you can win the Cleveland Rockers lunchbox. Nice. Filled with other shit. Classic, uh, a classic gift to be given away wow. from, from from us. No. So uh, that's it. This is yeah, you got an old school show. We recorded at, uh, at, 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 at Casa at, 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 Day a, Lunch in a different situation on uh, location. Um, yeah, on, on, this is our first on location recording in some time. We normally just, well, I guess we always record on location every day. We just record <laughs> where we record at. So, oh, well, yeah, well. I actually have to change the hashtags on the show because uh, it actually always has, uh, I don't know if you ever noticed, yeah. it has the, uh, the the spot where we normally record. And I didn't at. have to look around before I said some questionable shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, oddly enough, now that I read it, I look at what has become the intro of the show. It used to be the outro of the show. So, in this instance, this particular show, you won't get an intro, you will get an outro, and it'll be read by me. If you have questions or comments, we have multiple ways you can be reached. 
Twitter is, of course, the best way for those who need instant gratification. The show's Twitter feed is at SkimPod. It's S-K-I-M-P-O-D for the more patient amongst you. The email address for the show's podcast is StaceCrunchyBilk.com. Crunchy Gaming spelled with a K. We're available by the iTunes... I, by, I was about to say the iTunes Music Store. That doesn't exist anymore. We don't call it anymore. We call it via Apple Podcasts, mm. Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. And, of course, at the website, StaceCrunchyMilk.com. Please, read, review, subscribe. We, uh, I can kind of tell how many subscribers we have, and it's not a lot. It's not enough. <laughs> so, yeah. It's three inches worth. <laughs> we appreciate all of them, though. Love every one of y'all. We need Except more. for, like, that one. Like, fuck you. We need a more than a micro penis of, uh, po- of subscription worth. And the band plays on hey, his skim. I'm told that they do the job. And to that end, we provide for a podcast. They say the way to make a woman come is within the first two inches of her vagina. It's our music session podcast built on a hip-hop foundation, and it's dope. Shh. Our personal Twitters are... Dingaling King 4 <laughs> Not important. <laughs> the real ODP, which may stand for a penetrator. As, as least in the situations. That's actually Tatum216. That's Lunchbox2099, apparently. Based on a comic book that was definitely called 2099. What the fuck? Are you I'm making it my own, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I am Tayro713. You had just been podcast soon. I know you loved it. Peace. This is where the music used to go. <laughs> <laughs> Copyrighted. Hey, what happened to you? You used to be brutal.